Well, welcome Facebook Live to another morning of Daily Nuggets of Wisdom. Welcome to uh, day four. Day four as we deal with anxiety, depression, suicide, and the Bible. Anxiety, depression, suicide, and the Bible. Well, again, good morning. My name is Sean Isaacs, and uh, um, this is Daily Nuggets of Wisdom. If you are new to Daily Nuggets of Wisdom, we meet every morning at 7.30 a.m. right here at... Uh, on Facebook Live, Live Recession Proof Now, Facebook page. So today we're going to be dealing with the power of prayer and how prayer is uh, a great tool, right, that uh, you need to keep in your tool bag uh, when dealing with the subject of depression and discouragement, suicidal thoughts, panic attacks, any of these type of things. Um, prayer is a powerful tool, and, uh, uh, but you need to learn how to pray and what should you pray Right. If you're dealing with these things, what are the things you should pray for? And um, and you should be asking people to pray for you and that sort of thing. So yesterday, as we dealt with this subject, uh, the first step in finding help or cure for this particular challenge, I said, is to deal with the idea of renewing the mind. You need to renew the mind. And we dealt with renewing the mind in, in two major ways. One right the only way to renew the mind we said is to is to use the scriptures right uh you need to read books and 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 things related to um your challenge in any area of life right you want to renew the mind but the real way for the mind to be changed is through the wisdom of god the insight that comes from the lord the understanding that comes through the scriptures and so we said in our first two days of dealing with the causes and the cure that the first thing you want to do is to renew the mind. You need to renew the way you think, change the way you think about medicine, change the way you think about medication, change the way you think about food, change the way you think about the scriptures and its, its power to heal the mind, the emotions, the body, the soul, right? We said you need to do that. Today, we're going to deal with the subject of prayer, okay, and why uh, and how prayer is, again, such a good tool. Good morning, Peggy. It's good to see you, and um, I didn't tag anyone this morning because um, one, I just I uh, one of the benefits I think of of liking the uh, the live recession proof now page. I believe you're notified when I go live. I think that's one of the benefits of of broadcasting from here as opposed to broadcasting from my own personal page. So good to see you this morning. Um, we're going to be dealing, as I said, with the subject of prayer. I'll be looking at a, at a actually a, a psalm that I think is um, is a great psalm that those who are dealing with depression, discouragement, anxiety, anxious thoughts, having challenges dealing with um, the challenges of life, you know what what you should do. One of the things you should do, I would say, is definitely the psalms should be a place that you spend a lot of time and. Uh, one of the things that, that, that I've practiced for years, I think it's a great commitment, is to read five psalms a day, right? Five psalms a day. There's 150 psalms. Uh, you wasn't notified. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so I need to, uh, I need to figure out why. Um, I think then from the Live Recession Proof Now page, you need to, you need to, um, maybe you will have, to ask to be notified, All right? So um, I got to figure that out. I think like, follow, share. Yeah, there may be, you may need to ask to be notified. And so um, I should, uh, maybe I'll go ahead and, and tag. I wonder if I can, if I can, uh, maybe I can. I probably can tag a few people. Uh, I think I can, we'll see. In a moment. So anyway, I am going to uh, I'm going to pray this morning, so that we can so that we can get started, and ask the Lord for His help uh, as we uh, seek to open up the Scriptures and uh, find some help. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them uh, here this morning, and um, I'll try to answer them. I want to try to be a little bit more involved too as I as I do this, so that I can. Try to be of help. Um, I'm trying to tag people at the same time. So if I look a little distracted, it's uh, it's not that I am. Well, maybe a little bit. Anyway, let's pray this morning and ask the Lord for for His help. 
uh, as we seek to get into this into this subject. Father, I want to thank you this morning for another day of life. Thank you for another day of mercy, another day, Lord, to be able to experience the goodness of God. Your word says that it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And so my prayer this morning, Lord, is that you would wash over my mind and my heart and my soul with the word of God today, with the spirit of God and the power of God. I pray that your anointing, Lord, will be present uh, to destroy every yoke in my life and in the life of those that will be joining uh, this call today or, or at a later point. I'm asking you, Lord, to open the scriptures, make the word of God come to life. We know that your word is a living word. I pray, O oh God, that you would give us wisdom from the scriptures today on how to deal with this subject. You know the challenge that we have, that we all have in seeking to honor and glorify you. And so we ask you, Lord, to open up your word to our hearts, to our minds today, and uh, may you be glorified in all that we do. You are the potter and we are the clay. Everything that you do, Lord, is well done. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And so I ask you today, Lord, to be glorified. Let your will be done on earth as it is now done in heaven. I pray these things in Jesus' name. And again, it's for your glory and your honor that I pay, pray. Amen. All right, so i um, still trying to tag a few people here. Um, all right, so, okay, so again, we're going to deal with the subject of prayer and um, how and why this is such an important um, tool and maybe a neglected tool, something that many people probably don't seek to use when they're dealing with, uh, with this subject of depression and uh, Again, discouragement, anxiety, and so on. So the text I want to use is, um, is Philippians chapter 4. That's going to be where we begin. Philippians chapter 4. And uh, this is a good text to memorize as well. Uh, and one of the reasons you should, we said in our first step, right, that you should, uh, in the first step we said that you want to uh, renew the mind, right? You want to renew your mind. Uh, and the idea there is to change the way you think using the Word of God, using uh, proper um, education materials, books, the right type of books, and so on. And throughout this series, I'm going to recommend some books that you can read. I mentioned a book yesterday. Um, uh, well, I mentioned a couple books yesterday. Uh, and one of them, I, I, I think it was, I had it wrong. Uh, it was dealing with habit. But uh, if you're interested in that title, feel free to leave a message or, or, or just send me a note here um, in the uh, comments, and, I will, and I'll post the information. But the text I want to look at is in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Verses 6, good morning, Carol Lee. Good, good morning, good to see you. I, uh, one of the reasons I chose to move over here to um, uh, Live Recession Proof Now to broadcast from here is I thought that you guys would be notified every time I go live. I, um, I'm not sure why that's not happening. I, but there, you may need to tag. Um, you may need to tag or be tagged. Uh, so, Peggy, you said you'd like the copy of that book. Um, all right, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, okay, the book is called The Power of Habit. The, the Power of Habit. Um, the Power of Habit. And, uh, by the way, here's a, a, an interesting um, a little tip. A number of books you can get for free uh, on Amazon, on, uh, in Google or in YouTube. Some of these books you can find... Uh, audio versions by just going into YouTube and typing in the title of the book. Um, uh, there are certain books that I like to have a, the, the copy of the book so I can write in it, I can underline, highlight, make notes, that sort of thing. And so there's some books, even if I have the audio version, I'll buy the book itself just so that I can kind of stay, uh, that, that allows me to continue to be able to grow. Right, you're not gonna, you're not going, going to read a book of an author. Right, most authors take maybe decades to write a book, meaning they may not have taken many years to write the book, but the content that's in the book, it took them years to develop the insight, the wisdom, the knowledge, right, to be able to write that book. So you're not going to read through the average book, a good book, once and glean all the nuggets and all the insight and the wisdom from it. So that's one of the advantages of having a copy of the book so you can write in it, take notes, uh, look at it another day, read it maybe more than once a year or twice a year or or every year, every other year, that sort of thing, when you find certain books. So 
<clears throat> but uh, uh, YouTube is a great tool, a great source to get audiobooks. And you can also, when you put in the title of the book, let's say the book, this book's title is The Power of Habit, type in The Power of Habit uh, PDF. And when you put in PDF in Google, Google will search anywhere over the internet where, that, where the PDF version of that book may be found. And uh, you'll find in a lot of cases that, depending on how old the book is, uh, many of these books will be found online. All right, so that's just a little, a little tool, a little um, nugget of wisdom there or insight. Uh, so again, I'm in, in Philippians chapter 4, and maybe you haven't thought of prayer as a solution or one of the ways to deal with anxiety or anxious thoughts or depression, discouragement, suicidal thoughts. I believe a lot of this battle is spiritual, and um, one of your tools in the battle is prayer. So the text I want to look at is Philippians 4, verses 6 through uh, 6 and 7. Notice what it says in Philippians 4, verse 6. The Old English says, be careful for nothing. Now, the idea there is, is when it says careful, the idea is it's not saying don't be diligent, don't be concerned about things. Uh, it, it means exactly how the way it sounds. Don't be full of cares. All right, be careful for nothing. Uh, some translations will say be anxious for nothing. Um, I don't like the idea of being anxious for nothing because there are some things you should be anxious about. Right? There are some things in your life you're not going to change if you don't become anxious. For example, if you don't become anxious about, your, about uh, dealing with the subject of depression and anxiety, if this is not something that begins to bother you, you're probably not going to seek out the ways to get help or to, be, or to find change. So the, old, the authorized version says, be careful for nothing. And that idea is to be full of cares. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is a great promise in Scripture. Look at the promise that God gives here. Before we look at the the admonition or the command or what God commands us or tells us to do here, to deal with anxious thoughts. Look at what the promise is. The promise is in verse 7. It says, if you do what I tell you in verse 6 to do, verse 7 says, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding. There is a level of peace that you can receive from the Lord that surpasses your ability to understand or anyone else's ability to understand. In other words, how could you be going through such great difficulty and still be having this level of calm in your life, this level of peace in your life, right? There's a peace of God, right? This is a peace that comes from God. This is the peace that God has. There is a peace of God that passeth all understanding. And this peace, the scripture says, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And so this level of peace will keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. And the idea of keep is to guard, is to protect, right? And that's obviously something that you and I want in our life. You want your, you want your mind and your heart to be protected, All right? So this is a great, a good text to memorize if you're dealing with uh, discouragement, depression, uh, memorize these two verses. Again, good morning, Linda. Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. You want to memorize these two verses um, because, again, the Scripture says, hide the word of God. The psalmist says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I would, excuse me, not sin against you. So the word of God, again, is the sword of the Spirit. It's the weapon that the, that the Holy Spirit uses in the life of the child of God, but he can't Use that sword if you haven't memorized what the scripture has to say. All right, so one of the answers to dealing with discouragement, depression, suicidal thoughts, and so on is the, is the power of prayer. Your prayers and the prayers of others. Asking others to pray for you, to keep you in prayer. Prayer is a very powerful tool. So here God promises us in Philippians 4 verse 6, verse 7, that if we... Learn to pray. And there's three, three types of prayer, by the way, in verse 6. He says, be anxious for nothing, right? But by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. There are the three types of prayer. We'll come back to that in a moment. 
He says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. Notice that, it, that there's two parts of you that are kept. Your heart and your mind. Your mind deals with thinking and logic. Heart deals with, with thinking as well, scripturally speaking. But it also deals with your will and your emotions. All right, so, so the, the peace of God is able to keep your heart and mind as an umpire would, and in that sense, it protects you. It protects me. All right, so this is a great promise, and you should believe God, uh, regardless of how you feel, whatever your mood is, you should believe that God's word is true. That's why we began with step one. You need to renew the mind. You need to believe that God's word is true, regardless of how you feel. Now, notice in verse 6, that um, the first thing it says is don't be careful, don't be anxious. We'll use that word for easy understanding. Don't be anxious about anything or don't be full of cares about anything, right? Be careful for nothing. But then it says what you should do in everything, right? That you should be careful for nothing, but you should pray about everything. Now, that's pretty interesting. Because why would you pray about something if it doesn't concern you? And that's why I say to, to the idea of being anxious about something, anxiety should drive us to prayer. When you become anxious and concerned about something, it should cause you to go to God in prayer. And so the idea of being anxious for nothing doesn't go far enough. The idea is to, the same Greek word that's used here for careful is the same word that's used in Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus says, take no thought for your life. That's what it means to be careful. Take no thought for your life, what you should eat, what you will drink, and so on, and what you will put on, because uh, the life is more than these things, right? And so don't be careful for anything. In other words, don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed with anxious thoughts about what's going on in your life, but in everything, in everything. Now, notice it doesn't say in some things. And so one of the things you want to do when it comes to dealing with prayer and the power of prayer is you want to develop the habit of prayer. You want to develop the habit of praying about everything, that nothing is too small, nothing is too big to bring before God in prayer. And so, but in everything by prayer, the first thing you to do is to pray. But the second thing here is, it says by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. The temperature, the attitude of your prayer should be thanksgiving. All prayer should have an attitude of thanksgiving in it, right? And this is another way to deal with discouragement, depression, anxiety. Begin in the mood, begin to start thanking God for things you, uh, that you should be thankful for, right? If you're a child of God, you should be thankful for eternal life. You should thank God for his wisdom. You should thank God for his word. You should thank God for his people. You should thank God that you have eyes to see, that you have ears to hear, that you have a mouth that you can speak. You have feet that you can walk, hands that you can do things, that you can feel and touch. Why? Because these are things you should not take for granted. There are people that, are, that have hands that can't feel. There are people that have eyes that can't see. Right? So there's always, there's always something you could be thankful for. And when you de develop the habit of being thankful, it changes your mood. It changes your, the feelings. It changes your attitude. And so there's three types of prayer that are listed here, I think. Again, in everything by prayer, number one, by supplication, and thirdly, by thanks, in thanksgiving. So thanksgiving is something, is, it should be, connected with all of your prayer. You can always find something to be thankful for, no matter what may be the burden that you're in, no matter what the challenge may be, no matter what the need may be in your life, you can always find something to be thankful for, right? And so when you are asking, notice in the Lord's Prayer, before you ask God for anything, notice how the Lord's Prayer begins. The Lord's Prayer teaches us how to pray. It says, Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. That means to hallow God's name is to praise him. Uh, that's like saying things like, Lord, I thank you that there is none like you, Lord. Your name is greater than every other name. You are the great I am. You are the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Lord, I worship you this morning. I thank you, Lord. Right? And so that's to hallow his name. Hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come. Before I begin to ask God for my needs, I'm praying about his kingdom. Lord, let your kingdom, your rule, your authority come to my life, to the life of my children, the life of my spouse, the life of my co-workers, life of my friends. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I want your will to be done in my life, in the life of those that I'm praying for and about. Notice again that before you ask God for anything for yourself, you start with hallowing his name, at setting his name apart, Right? And why is that important? Because the more you focus on the bigness of God, the more your problems get smaller. Right? And if you read the prayers in the Old Testament especially, many of those prayers, many of the prayers in the Old Testament, they pray that way. Right? They pray that way. And if we had a little time, I would kind of demonstrate that to you. So you begin with, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I want to see your kingdom and your rule and your will be done in my life and in the life of those I love and those around me just as it is done in heaven. In heaven there is complete and full obedience, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? Then, the, 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 then Jesus says you ask, give us this day our daily bread. Now you ask for your needs. So notice that the Lord's Prayer is structured to create an attitude of thanksgiving, an attitude of worship, an attitude of praise before you begin to ask for things. Why? Because the more you focus on that way of praying, the more your heart would be filled with faith to believe God to do what you're asking Him to do. And so this is not a coincidence. All right, so thanksgiving is uh, a theme throughout the scriptures, and it's always connected to prayer. It says, you know, prayer should be with thanksgiving. Notice again, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So what's the difference between prayer and supplication? Well, supplication is a stronger term. Uh, and it's the, it has the idea of of praying for uh, to, to avoid evil, praying to avoid something that's potentially bad. So you're supplicating. So when Jesus was in the Garden of Eden, uh, he prayed in the Garden of Eden, Eden, but he didn't just pray; he supplicated the Father. When he said, "Father, if it be possible, remove this cup from me," that was a supplication. Um, and so that went beyond just prayer. It was supplication. So let me look up the term really quick since I'm, since I'm in here. And then we're going to look at Psalm 13, Psalm 13 as an example of the type of prayer you should pray uh, uh, when you are dealing with these, these things. Like, again, uh, the, um, when you're dealing with anxiety, depression, discouragement, uh, anxious thoughts. Panic, panic attacks, all these type things, what should you do? What type of prayers should you pray? So the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, I exhort therefore, verse 1, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So in this verse, in this text, it identifies four types of prayer. There are supplications, plural. There are prayers, there are intercessions, that's where you stand in the gap for someone. That means you are standing between you, between that person and whatever that challenge or need is, and God. You are standing in the gap, that's called intercession. Jesus is an intercessor, he is our great high priest. This is where when Job, when Job supplicated or prayed for his children, Job interceded. He stood in the gap for his children. He made sacrifices before God for his children. So that would be intercessions, right? Um, in uh, 1 Timothy 5.5, 5, it says, Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate, trusted in God and continueth in, what does she continue in? She continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. Hebrews 5, 7, it says about Jesus, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears. All right, so uh, supplications has the idea of praying for something to be avoided. 
uh, again, every prayer is not prayed in that same way. So you want to develop the habit of prayer so that when you don't want to wait until you are in great difficulty to learn how to pray or to start to pray. You want to develop the ha habit of prayer. And this is why Proverbs 3, 5 to 7 has become such a popular text for so many of God's people. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, in all of thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So there is the habit of prayer. In all of your ways, bring it before God in prayer. And so this text promises us that, um, that if we come with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto God and the peace of God that passeth all understanding would rule or guard our hearts. So let me quickly, I want to look at Psalm chapter 13. And uh, if you, again, are dealing with uh, depression, discouragement, or any of these type things, uh, another, another thing to uh, do, as I said earlier in the beginning of this, in the beginning of this post, is to, you want to make sure that you, um, uh, what, was, what was I going to say now? I'm trying to type at the same time. Make sure that you will um, read the Psalms, all right? The Psalms will give you the language of prayer. The Psalms will give you the language of praise. The Psalms will teach you how to pray. The Psalms will teach you how to um, how to how to praise God with language to you. So if you feel like you're not sure what to pray about or how to pray, or you feel like I don't know what words to say, then the Psalms are good to use. And, and this Psalm, Psalm 13 is a good example. So Psalm 13 is only uh, six verses. So I'm going to run through this quickly and then we'll wrap up for the day. If you have a comment or question on this, let me know. But again, our, our, our answer today is when you're dealing with this subject or this problem, this challenge in your life, you need to develop the habit of prayer, right? Don't wait until you have anxious or, or um, uh, thoughts of discouragement, depression, feeling overwhelmed, feeling overburdened. Don't wait until those things happen to develop the habit of praying about everything. Uh, develop the habit now when things are good, when things are, when you feel you don't have those negative moods. Develop the habit now. Don't, don't wait because when things get difficult and challenging, we tend to default to that which is comfortable. That's my point, that which is normal. So if you don't develop the habit of prayer when things are good, when things become difficult, it's hard to pray. All right, so Psalm 13, verse 1 says, How long will thou forget, O Lord? Forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? This is a man who is discouraged. This is a man who is probably, could be described as depressed. Listen to his language. How long will thou forget, O Lord? He is saying that God has forgotten him. God has forgotten his situation. Do you feel like that sometimes? Do you feel like in the midst of the storms of life, like God is not there? Well, you're in good company because many of God's people feel that way and have felt that way. Notice what he says. How long will thou forget me? Not just my situation. How long will you forget me, O Lord? You know, you remember others. Other people, feel, it looks like everybody else is taken care of. Other people's prayers are being answered. Their needs are met. But, but for me, you have forgotten me. How long will you do this, God? How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? He's asking God the question. And so, again, notice in this text that the psalmist is not afraid to tell God how he feels. Right? That's another, that's why prayer is so important. You want to be able to, you don't want to keep those thoughts to yourself because they put you in more and more of a dark place. Have a conversation with God. Open up Psalm 13. Open up Psalm 42. Open up the Psalms and begin to read them out loud to yourself. Hear the language of the psalmist, right? As they cry out to God, as they deal with their anxiety, as they deal with depression and discouragement, and uh, even many of the prophets feeling like uh, thoughts, suicidal thoughts, like take my life, Lord, right? There are people, you, when you see that you're not alone, that in itself becomes, a, that can bring, bring encouragement to the heart and to the soul. How long will thou forget me, O Lord, the psalmist says, forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me, right? Do you feel like that? Lord, why are you hiding your face from me? I don't sense your presence. I don't feel like you're concerned about me or my situation. 
Again, if you feel this way at times, again, the key word is feel. Feel. The key word is feel. Just because you feel that way doesn't mean that that's a reality. Okay? The Bible says the things that are seen are temporal. The things that are unseen are eternal. This is why you don't want to get caught up in looking at what you can see, what you can feel, what you can hear, because those things are temporary. The things that are unseen are eternal in nature. All right, so verse 1, the psalmist begins with, How long will you forget me? How long will you... Uh, he's dealing with his depression, and this here, as he battles depression, right? He's in a war. Um, the psalmist begins with uh, verses 1 and 2 here, and, uh, and I'm saying to you, that this is a prayer for the person who is depressed. Okay, This is a prayer to pray. This is a psalm to read. Um, you need to be honest with God. That's verses 1 and 2. Step 1. Uh, if you're going to deal with depression, discouragement, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, panic attacks, God already knows. So you're not going to surprise Him by, by talking to Him about it. All right? Notice verse 2. How long shall I take counsel in my soul? having sorrow in my heart. And notice, not for a moment, the psalmist says, having sorrow in my heart daily. How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? How long shall the voices that I'm hearing, that's my enemy, the voice of the evil one, the voice of those who are against me, how long shall they be exalted above me? The first step from a prayer standpoint, in dealing with discouragement, anxiety, depression, anxious thoughts, is you've got to be honest with yourself and with God. It's okay to acknowledge that you, that you feel a certain way. It is okay to acknowledge that you feel these negative thoughts and feelings and that you want to, uh, maybe you want to harm yourself or harm others. It's okay to acknowledge that to God. So again, step one, be honest with, honest with yourself and with God. Let me read the two verses again. How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? It's almost like you can, you can, you can um, label these first two verses. How long? How long? Sometimes you're in the midst of difficulty and it seems like it's never going to end. You go from one trial to the next, from one difficulty to, an, to another. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? All right? So the first, the first challenge for the psalmist is, the first key to solving this issue for the psalmist is he is willing to be honest with God and with himself. Uh, the second key, right, is... Not only is he honest with God, um, he is willing to draw near to God. He's willing to draw near to God. And why I identify that is because, so, you know, you can be honest with God, but then you can just blame God, right? Um, you can just blame God for your situation, and uh, that's not going to help you to get out of that negative place uh, that you're in. So notice in verse 3 and 4 how he begins to move toward God. First, he acknowledges that he has a problem. He has this challenge in his life. He feels discouraged and depressed. He has no problem with acknowledging that and asking God, how long is it going to be this way, God? Good morning, Darshel. Good to see you. But notice in verse 3 and 4, he now draws near to God. He doesn't just blame God for his situation, but he draws near to him. And um, he says, consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten my, mine eyes lest I sleep the sleep of death. What language? Lighten my eyes. In other words, my, my anxiety, my depression, my discouragement is so heavy that I, it's hard for me to keep my eyes open. I feel like if I go to sleep, I, I won't wake up tomorrow. Lest I sleep the sleep of death. Again, sometimes when you are depressed or discouraged, you feel like it's just you, like no one else understands. Isaiah, uh, not Isaiah, uh, um, Elijah went through that, right? As he began to cry out to God and say that, like he's the only one, that, that there's no one else that is serving God. And he felt depressed and discouraged like it was just him, right? You weren't notified this morning either. Okay, 
All right, um, I'm gonna have to tag you guys. Uh, what I'm gonna recommend is that you, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit of research to find out because I was under the impression that once you like the Live Recession Proof Now page, that anytime I go live that you'll be notified. I know that I'm notified when others go live, so I need to find out why that's the case. But what I would recommend is uh, go back to the page when you have a moment. You could do it even now while we're speaking. And uh, and uh, look and see if there's some way for you to be notified. I think there's a, just like in, um, in YouTube, you can subscribe to a channel. And so that when somebody posts a new video or go live on Google Hangouts or they go live on video, uh, you'll be notified. I think there's a way to do that in, in Facebook as well. So um, what I'll do for the rest of this week is if you want to, if you watch this later and you missed being notified uh, when I went live, let me know that you want to be notified and I'll go ahead and tag you. Um, I'll tag you so that you know when I go live. Um, but I expect that this group is going to start growing uh, and so it's going to be hard to tag everyone. And so um, in the meantime, you may want to just um, uh, maybe add it to your calendar or something or your, or your phone. All right, so, but I'll try, to, I'll try to be mindful of that so that I can remind you guys. But again, if you're just coming in, we're, we're dealing with how prayer, prayer is one of those tools to use when you're dealing with depression, anxiety, and so on. And um, uh, the, first, the first tool we dealt with was renewing the mind. And that's step one. You need to renew the mind. And I'm assuming if you're renewing your mind and you were with us the last two days, you know that part of that, that, that renewal is, needs to take place with uh, reading the scriptures and memorizing the scriptures, hiding the word of God in your heart. But not just the scriptures, you want to read books dealing with the, the areas that you feel challenged so that you can your mindset about these things can change. All right. But secondly, we're saying that prayer is the is, is answer number two. And um, and we're in Psalm 13. I said that Psalm 13 is the prayer for the depressed. If you feel depressed, discouraged, anxious thoughts, panic attacks, any of these type of things, uh, memorize Psalm 13. And one of the ways to memorize it is to read it every day. Read it every time you feel anxious. Read it every time you feel overwhelmed. Read it every time you feel depressed. Okay, and read it. Don't just read it quietly, by the way. Read it out loud. Okay, there is another nugget of wisdom for you. Uh, there are a lot of people who pray silently. If you deal with anxious thoughts or depression, silent prayers is not the way to pray. You don't want to pray silently. You don't want to pray quietly. Why? Because you need to, subconsciously, you need to hear the words. You need to hear the words. And so, if I was depressed, I would pray this prayer. Psalm 13, verse 1. And I would get on my knees, or I would stand, I would walk, maybe while I'm walking, whatever. However you want to do this, there's not one way to do it. How long will you forget me, O Lord? Step 1, verse 1 and 2. Be honest with God and with yourself. It's okay to acknowledge that you feel discouraged, feel depressed, feel alone feel like god has forgotten you that's okay god has broad shoulders he he's a good parent he's not going to feel negative thoughts about you he's not going to abrade you or beat you verbally because you acknowledge uh how you feel and this is why the psalms are good because the psalmists uh, are they're honest with their prayers they're honest with david is honest with the way he feels and and many of the other psalmists are as well so the first step in this prayer is to be honest with god and with yourself how long will you forget me O lord forever how long will you hide your face from me how long shall i take counsel in my soul having sorrow in my heart daily i'm i'm having conversation with myself i feel like these things are never going to leave me that i never these moods never go away how long shall my enemy be exalted over me so that's step one step two he said once you are honest with god and with yourself then you want to draw near to god you don't want to just in being honest with god blame god but you want to not only not only um be honest with him you want to begin to move toward God in your prayer. You want to begin to move toward God in your heart. And so uh, the psalmist says in verse 3 and 4, Consider and hear, and hear me, O Lord my God. Notice, uh, though he feels like God has forgotten him, God is still his God. Notice the language, though he feels, if you look at verse 1 and 2, you would think this place, person is just in a state of complete uh, um, pessimism and negative feelings and emotions, but that's not true. This person is being honest with how they feel. There's nothing wrong with that. 
Verse 3 and 4, Consider and hear me, O, o Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Again, the psalmist feels as though uh, this weight is so heavy upon him that when he closes his eyes, he may not wake up. Lest I sleep the sleep of death. Have you ever felt that way? Well, you're in good company. Jonah felt that way. Uh, as I said earlier, Elijah felt that way after having a great victory. Going into a uh, state of self-pity, he began to ask God to take his life. Okay, uh, Juna did the same thing. All right, so again, just because you have these thoughts and feelings, that's not a bad thing in and of itself. It becomes a bad thing if you stop fighting against the thoughts and the feelings. Verse 4 says, Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved, when I fall, when I stumble, when I quit, when I faint. See what the psalmist is saying? The psalmist is saying, Lord, how long are you going to allow me to be in this situation? But even though I feel like you have forgotten me, I am still expecting you to deliver me. Why? Because I don't want my enemy to rejoice over me. Do you want the devil to rejoice over you? God doesn't want the devil to rejoice over you. The devil would rejoice if you, if you, um, if your thoughts take you so, so much in a dark place that you end up taking your own life. Then that's a victory that Satan has won. Why? Because he is the prince of the power of the ear and he is a murderer from the beginning. Death is one of his tools. His goal is to get you into such a state of depression and anxiety and feeling overwhelmed that you say there's nothing else you can do but end your life. But that's not God's desire, because God, Jesus, is, is uh, life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the what? I am the life. Everything about God is about living. It is about life. And so the, the, the enemy of our soul, of your soul, is about death, but Christ is about life. And, and his desire is that you would conquer this, this challenge in your life and be able to move forward. So in the midst of the psalmist's darkness and darkest hour, he's able to begin to, to move toward God in his prayer and cry out to God and ask God to lighten his eyes, lighten the weight that is upon his soul. And, um, and then notice verse 3 and 4, verse 5 and 6, I'm sorry, uh, that he demonstrates how he is trusting in the Lord. Verse 5, verse five. you would think again, if you just had verse 1 and 2, how long will you forget me, right? That, that he would remain there, but he doesn't remain there. In his prayer is a language of trust. He says, but I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he had dealt bountifully with me. Here is again why I love the language of the psalmist. Even though the psalmist often, the writers appear to be filled with despair and anxious thoughts and depression and they seem to be in a state of complete negative moods. Uh, on the surface, that's the way it may look, but it's never the reality. Okay. In other words, uh, most of the psalmists, when they talk the way this psalmist did in verses 1 and 2, they, they, they don't end that way. Notice that his language is, one, I have trusted, Two, my heart shall rejoice. Three, I will sing. Why? All of this is because you've dealt bountifully with me. Even though he felt like the Lord had forgot him in the moment, when he thinks about his past, God has been good to him. That's one of your keys. In the moment you may feel depressed, in the moment you may be filled with anxious thoughts, in the moment you may feel overwhelmed, in the moment you may feel, I can't pay this mortgage, I'm not going to be able to pay this bill, I'm going to lose my home, I'm going to lose my job, my child is going to lose their life. In the moment it may feel like it's not going to change. But if you focus on the moment of discouragement, or the overwhelm in the moment, it's only going to get bigger. Remember we said, what you focus on only gets bigger. It may not get bigger in reality, it gets bigger in your own mind. Right? What we focus on, on only gets bigger to us. Right? You look at the, uh, the spies that went into the land. There was Joshua and Caleb and the ten other spies. 
Joshua and Caleb saw the giants as small because their focus was not on the giants. Their focus was on their big God. And so the giants became very small. But the ten spies focused on the giants in comparison to themselves. And so they described themselves. They said, we were like grasshoppers. Well, the way you see yourself, that's exactly the way you will be. That's exactly how you feel. You'll feel as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. And so they saw themselves as grasshoppers or ants or little small creatures compared to the big giants. And so guess what happened? They were overwhelmed by that. They became depressed. They became filled with bitterness and malice and other negative thoughts. And they poisoned the rest of Israel. And if you know your Bible, uh, everyone over 40 were not able to enter into the promised land. You know that your belief can keep you from entering into God's precious promises. That which God has promised you, you can lose because... You've not learned how to conquer unbelief. You've not learned how to conquer despair and discouragement, right? You have to conquer it. You have to fight. There's a battle that you're in, right? And so, though the psalmist is in a state of complete darkness, the heavens are like brass. He feels like God is not hearing him. God has, in the moment, forgotten me. That the key there is, in the moment, God has forgotten him. That's how he feels. But he remembers how God has been and how God has treated him in the past. Listen, he says, I have, I have trusted, past tense, I have trusted. Secondly, my heart shall rejoice, future, present, I'm going to rejoice, right? I will sing, that's, that's in the future I'm going to sing. He's already committing in this state of depression and discouragement what he's going to do. I'm going to sing to the Lord. I'm going to trust. My heart is going to rejoice in your salvation. That's future. He's looking forward. Salvation here is not like being saved from, from the wrath of God or saved from hell for the psalmist. This is deliverance. Even though I'm in this state of darkness, verses 1 and 2, and I feel depressed and discouraged, I am going to rejoice in the, the, um, the thought that because I know who you are, God, that you will deliver me. That salvation there is deliverance. And so even in the midst of your difficulty, you can develop an attitude of heart in prayer to rejoice. Okay? So the psalmist says, I have trusted in thy mercy. I, my heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. And then lastly, I will sing unto the Lord. All right? I will sing unto the Lord. Um... The word salvation here does not refer to salvation in the future world, but to deliverance from his present trouble. Or to God's, excuse me, he trusts that God is going to take him out of this situation. So again, this here is a good psalm to meditate upon and to memorize. And if you are in a state of depression right now, or you feel anxious, <clears throat> my recommendation is this is the prayer you should pray to God, Psalm 13. And... Um, by the way, uh, if you've never tried it before, uh, if you lack words to pray, pray the Psalms, pray the scriptures, right? So the psalmist says, how long will thou forget me, O Lord? Father, I feel like you are not here. I feel like you've forgotten me, Lord. How long are you going to allow me to go through this situation feeling as if you are not present? Father, I know you are there, but why is it that I don't sense your presence? Why is it that the darkness in my life seems to overwhelm me? The psalmist says, how long will thou hide your, thy face from me? Why are you hiding your face from me, O God? See, this is how I would pray if I was praying this psalm back to God. Why is it that, that I don't sense your presence? Lord, would you not draw near to me so that I can feel your continence? Why is it that the, the oppression of the enemy feels so strong in my life? The darkness feels so weighty, Lord. How long shall I take counsel, right? So you could take each of these phrases and begin to pray them back to God. And the Lord will, the more you practice this, the, the easier it will become. So I'm going to end with reading this psalm through again. Um, <clears throat> again, the second key to dealing with depression, discouragement, suicidal thoughts, and so on, remembering that you are in a war, is prayer. 
prayer. You need to develop the habit of prayer. Again, don't wait until you, you are in those states of darkness or discouragement and so on to pray. Do it before. Okay? So the psalmist says, How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? He has sorrow daily. How long shall mine enemies be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. So there are your three solutions. Number one, in prayer, be honest with yourself and God. And I will add, be honest with others. Find someone you can consult and console that you can um, share your struggle with. James 5 is another great principle in prayer. It says, confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that ye may be healed. One, another way to be healed, spiritually speaking, Right, whether that's physical healing, emotional healing, um, the healing of healing of the soul and the mind. Uh, <clears throat> another way to do that is through uh, through confession to others. So, so, so all of this falls under prayer. So, listen to the words in James chapter five. It says, "Confess," verse sixteen. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. So, in this prayer, it's not just your prayers. It should be people, other people praying for you as well. And, and sometimes people won't pray for you because they don't know you're dealing with depression. Since I started this subject, I can't tell you how many people have messaged me and told me that they struggle with this area. I have friends that I've known for decades that I didn't know that this was a problem that they had. And so um, find people that you feel comfortable with, not people that are going to gossip and, and that sort of thing. You need to find people that are spiritually mature. That if you share their, your struggle and what you're dealing with, what you're wrestling with, with them, that they are willing to pray for you and with you. Confess your faults one to another, secondly, and pray for one another. Why? That you may be healed. The goal of those prayers is for healing. The outcome of those prayers is for healing. It's not just so you can endure the situation. It's so that you can find healing in the situation. The scripture says the effectual fervid prayer of the right of a righteous man availeth much. All right. And if you know your Bible, where two of you will touch and agree on anything they ask in my name, it shall be done. There is power in individual prayer, but there is superpower when you people when two or more people pray. Okay, so that's another thing in your prayer. So be honest with God, honest with yourself, and be honest with others. Find someone that you can confide in and share your struggle with who will pray along with you. Okay? Secondly, you need to, once you've decided to be honest with God, others, and yourself, the second thing is you need to, you need to be, be okay with, uh, and metaphorically speaking, move toward God in your prayer. Um, don't stay in that state of darkness. Expect that God will hear you. The psalmist says, consider and answer me. He expect, he's expecting that God is going to hear his prayer. He's not just complaining before God, right? You can be honest with God and it just become a state of complaining, right? The children of Israel were rejected from uh, often. God, God condemned them because they, they murmured and complained in the middle of the storm. They stayed in the storm complaining and murmuring before God. You know, are you know, are you going to let us stay in here and die, Lord? Are you going to, you know, you're going to allow this situation to overwhelm me and kill me? You can't stay there. You may start there, but you then need to move into a state of expecting that God will answer you. So begin to move toward God in your prayer. The psalmist says, "Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death." lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him, and lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken, as another um, translation reads. And then lastly, um, continue in the midst of that difficulty to trust in the Lord. The, the psalmist um, doesn't know when God is going to answer his prayer. 
He doesn't know how God is going to answer his prayer, but he continues to believe. He continues to hope. He continues to trust. And he says, I will sing. My heart will rejoice. And I, I, and I am trusting you. All right. So this is a great psalm to, to memorize. And uh, if you don't know, one way to memorize, by the way, is to read things out loud. Right. The way I memorize scripture is I just read the same text over and over out loud. And if I was memorizing Psalm 13, I'd begin this way. How long will thou forget me, O Lord? How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Psalm 13, verse 1. How long will thou forget me, O Lord? How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Again, repeating it out loud, right? Not just internally. Um, when you hear it within your, with your ears and with your spirit, man, your inner man, you'll retain more. It's easier to, mem to remember, okay? Plus, plus, you'll begin to believe more of what you hear because faith comes by what? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so um, uh, there's lots of benefit to praying out loud and reading the scriptures out loud, especially if you're an introvert, if you're a pessimistic type person, if you find that you are dealing with negative thoughts a lot and that sort of thing. Uh, prayer is a great key. So, how long will thou forget me, O Lord? How long will thou forget me, O Lord? How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? Right? And so if I was memorizing this, by just repeating that, I think I could say most of it without looking at it again. How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? Um, and then, okay, the last part, I got to do it again. Right? How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long will thou hide thy face from me? Psalm 13, verse 1. How long will thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? You see that? Now, if I keep repeating that, right, over and over again, it's going to start with uh, my short-term memory. Now, if I don't do that anymore after today, I'll forget it. And this is a key to memorization. Later today, maybe I'll do it again or before I go to bed tonight. I'll repeat it while I'm laying in bed. By the way, if you're having these issues, again, dealing with depression, discouragement, anxiety, the more you focus on the Word of God, you can't focus on those negative thoughts and the feelings will go away. How long will thou forget me, O God, O Lord? Forever? Will, uh, how, long will thou, how long will thou hide thy face from me? Psalm 13, verse 1. Again, you keep repeating this and eventually... Uh, when you have these thoughts, the Holy Spirit will bring these things to your remembrance, all right? So that's our second key or way to deal with depression, discouragement, and anxiety, and so on. Prayer. Prayer. All right? So uh, I hope you found something helpful here. Thanks for hanging out again today. Um, I'm going to try to figure out why you guys were not notified when I went live. And uh, again, as usual, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them. Here, I always look at uh, your comments and other things after uh, and later. So God bless you guys. Have a great mo morning. And again, welcome to uh, Daily Nuggets of uh, Wisdom. God bless. Bye.